Today's species spotlight is on one of the most unique and oddest looking species of reptile on the entire planet, and certainly the most unique and oddest looking species of turtle. Today we are talking about the Fly River Turtle. Now I obviously don't have one here at my facility, which means taking a little field trip over to my friends at Colorado Gators, where we got to interact with and film the really, really cool and very funny male Fly River Turtle named Isaac. Now, the Fly River Turtle trace originates back to parts of the Northern Territory in Australia, as well as water systems in New Guinea. And in fact, the longest river in New Guinea is where not only the turtle gets its namesake, the Fly River, but it's also where a good majority of the animals that are in our captive population can actually trace their origins to, with Australia being not able to export animals out for quite a few decades, which means they all come from the New Guinea or the Pacific Indo or Indonesian population. Now obviously when you very first look at the Fly River Turtle, this is a very odd looking animal. And the first thing that comes to mind is the fact that they are the only freshwater turtle that have flippers instead of feet. However, they are shaped a little bit differently than their marine counterparts, being much more streamlined, really only ever leaving the water to lay their eggs on beaches. The rest of the time is spent in, their wa in the water the entire lives. The Fly River Turtles flippers look a little bit different. They almost look like very wide, spread apart, regular feet with fingers and claws that are just heavily wet. The thought for that, which some scientists agree on, most scientists I should say, agree or think, is that they actually will leave the water much more often than the marine counterparts, the sea turtles. However, they do still spend the vast majority of their lives in the water, still leaving to probably bask a little bit, maybe, I cannot find any real good documentation of that, as well as laying their eggs on land as well. They're a relatively large species of turtle as well. They can average two to three-ish feet in carapace length, and they can weigh more than 40 pounds. Although there are regular reports of fishermen who say that they have found over 60 pound individuals all of the time. So, yeah, we all know about, I mean, there's literally the phrase fisherman's tail, so who knows about that. Now, in addition to them being the only finned flesh, freshwater turtle, they also are unique amongst soft shell turtles because then they don't have that scaly boned carapace like sea turtles or sliders or pond turtles. They do still have that kind of leathery skin on the outside of their shell, but it's actually a domed carapace like most terrapins and turtles and not the flat plate that you would see in other softshell turtles like say a Florida softshell turtle. In addition to that, their nose, which is actually outside of the reptile community where they're much more commonly referred to as as the pig nose turtle, is even unique amongst the softshell turtles. If you ever look at the face of a softshell turtle, you'll notice that they have kind of the elongated piggy nostril looking nose that they use to put their nose out of the water so they can keep the rest of their body maintained under the water level. However, they're more snorkel white. When you look at like the spiny soft shells, the Floridas, the Chinese soft shell turtles, those, it's a little bit more narrow and it's not as broad where it looks like an actual pig snout like the fly river turtle. Now, these guys are incredibly unique and very, very funny. And you will notice that in a lot of the video of today's, a lot of the footage of today's video, that I actually had a little bit trouble getting good, consistent, longer length videos, and that's for two reasons. One of which was the alligator guard that were sharing his tank, or I should say it's a giant indoor stock tank meant for raising fish in, um, like commercial fish in, they would not leave me alone because supposedly the person that they came from was hand feeding alligator guard. I don't know. And the other reason is that Isaac himself they are an incredibly intelligent and curious species of turtle. So oftentimes you will see me, it's probably gonna be a lot of cuts once I'm done doing this. And that is because I would have the, water, the camera underwater, but Isaac would always immediately come up and go, what is this? It's absolutely adorable. Now, in the wild, these guys are omnivores. The vast majority of their diets are plant material based, but they will often eat mollusks, shellfish, maybe smaller fish species, but there wasn't a whole lot of good data about that. And unfortunately, they are threatened to endangered in different areas of the range due to probably what you guys already probably know, 
overpopulation of uh, humans, pollution, loss of habitat, as well as they are considered pests in some areas by fishermen because they are known because of how smart, how curious, how intelligent they are. They are known for taking bait for other targeted species. So fishermen will often catch and unalive them because they consider them a pest in areas where they're not protected, which kind of stinks. So with this in mind, if let's just say that you decide you do in fact want to take home one of these animals as a captive pet, there are quite a few things that are going to need to be thought about first. The first of which is availability and price. They are very, very rare to come by. There are still every once in a while some wild caught animals because New Guinea does still export them from time to time, but more often than not, they are usually captive born and bred. But with that comes along a very hefty price tag. The next of which is that they are notorious, sorry for the fly, they are notorious for being very sensitive when first getting established. They are very susceptible to stress and the diseases and all the things that come with that stress to where if you take an animal you put it into an environment it's very stressed out they usually are more susceptible to disease and things like that so they need incredibly large enclosures we're talking hundreds if not thousands of gallons of water as i pointed out isaac is in a multi-thousand gallon commercial fish stock tank and that's where he lives with other large fish, including the koi, the alligator gar, some red tail catfish, and that's where he spends his time in that very large thing. And that water needs to be very well filtered. As I said before, they can be very susceptible to diseases. They have to have really nice, clean, lots of lots of nice, fast moving water. Matt, my man, man. That being said, <laughs> They do actually establish well on commercially made food. Once the, they are established in your enclosure, whatever you decide or have the ability to give them, once they do kind of settle in after that initial period of shock, because that's really what it is, a lot of times they will often adapt very well to commercially made pellet food. Obviously, you can still add in or supplement other types of raw food including probably shrimp and other mollusks and other plant material and things like that so it makes it to be something to where you hopefully if you got a more established relatively young captive animal might be something that could be really good for you again if you just have the ability to keep them the other thing about this is that while i've never talked to anyone who has ever kept more than one at a time every bit of information that i could find out there is that they are notoriously aggressive and territorial with especially members of their own species, but other turtles and supposedly other fish as well. I have seen Isaac for over the year that he has been there and he has never had any issues, even when he was living with a mata mata turtle, with a couple mata mata turtles and even a smaller snapping turtle as well as all the fish. There was never any issues between Isaac or any of the other species that were in there while they were moving them around with all the chaos that's been going on at Colorado Gators. But every single bit of information did allude to that, which supposedly makes it towards even more of a difficult process to breed them in captivity where they are have to be stuck together to where it's not as easy for one to get away from the other if they're not being receptive to one or the other. So thus making captive breeding an even more of a challenge. However, that all that in mind, if you are a person that is probably a very unique individual that does have the capability of having a large commercial fishing pond, a large indoor pond, or heck, even maybe an enclosed indoor pool, I don't know how people live, that you have the ability to keep well-filtered, well-maintained hundreds of thousands, hundreds if not thousands of gallons of water for a Fly River Turtle. It is an animal that you are legally able to keep that if you haven't caught on by all of the video today, are absolutely amazing little animals. They're very personable, they're very social, they recognize individuals. In fact, a lot of the documentation we have of captive reptiles playing and having real mental stimulation and things like that are turtle species, including the Fly River Turtle. So this is something that you could have a lot of really great enrichment activity and bonding time with more than even say even some monitor species out there. I know monitor people are gonna be yelling at me and if you haven't started typing at me, I'm just going with what I have found and seen and talked to about, so eh. But there are an amazing group of animals. They're really, really cool. 
and that you know to say that it would be a dream species for me maybe possibly but i mean really the act the most amount of space i could really dedicate to would be probably be around 200 to 500 gallons and honestly that is not enough for an adult fly river turtle especially a female which are a little bit larger could not absolutely maintain that for a good quality of life for that animal so if you have the ability to do so I couldn't re I highly recommend these guys enough. Really, really cool species of turtle, especially the captive ones out there. And heck, if we want to, you know, throw our hats into that whole invisible art thing, maybe you could be the someone who sits there and can reproduce captive-born fly river turtles every year. Because it is being done, it's just very few and far between. And I've seen them in some brick-and-mortar pet stores and at some of the large reptile expos as well as in other facilities, not just Colorado Gators. I know they have one at Nerd and a couple other places like that. So it can be done, it can be done well for them. So again, they are really, really cool species of turtle. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. This is one of the ones where they end up being kind of like a little bit more of a deterrent for a lot of people to get one, but I'm just really here to talk about really, really cool species of reptiles for so, you guys. Thank you all so much. Big, big thanks to Colorado Gators for letting me come down there and basically harass your alligator gar for an hour and a half, two hours, we're trying to get good video of Isaac because he was just being silly the whole time. Um, if anyone is in Colorado or wants to travel, they are open up year round. They have nice warm weather, even, they have nice warm water for their animals, even in winter. So if, if you want to travel in the winter and you want to go skiing, go check out Colorado Gators. Go. But thank you all so much for watching. Hope if you guys have any suggestions, ideas that you want to hear me talk about, other species spotlight, let me know down in the comments. I do keep note of all the ones that you guys are suggesting. Sometimes it just might be a while before I get there because I want to have good quality video and images to go along with me doing the research and conveying it to everyone back as well. So if you want to do that, let me know down in the comments. Any other questions, comments, concerns, email me, comment me, other social medias. If you can, please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and check out the playlist of the Species Spotlight. There's over 70 different species that I've listed in there, and I'm just going to keep adding more as I can. So again, thank you all so much. Hope you're having a great day, and we'll check you next time.